Hello everyone, welcome to the House of Horrors. Now today I have yet another Living Dead doll that I have been collecting. I think I got probably close to 13 or 14 of them so far. And this one here is based off of the 1994 Brandon uh, Lee, the Crow movie that came out in 1994. Well this is the Living Dead doll version of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it out of its box. And we're going to talk about it and the articulation and show you what it looks like up close and personal. But in the meantime, let's just go ahead and check out the box art. Now keep in mind, this box is probably a little over, maybe 15 inches tall, okay? So to get it in the full size of the camera view would be impossible unless I go all the way straight back with this. And that kind of defeats its purpose, so... I'll be showing you the box art and turn around showing you from the side and stuff because of the size of the box. And then eventually I'll shut this down, pull the actual figure out of its uh, box, and then we'll talk about the figure in itself, okay? So let's just go ahead, as you can see in the plastic here. Uh, some say he's a little girlish in the way he put they applied the makeup and the facial features, uh, but I think it looks okay for the most part in my opinion, okay? So, but you'll see it up close and personal once I pull it out of the box. But in the meantime, let's look at the box art here. Okay, and that is LDD Presents The Crow. Okay, now the side of the box, it's not really much in the way of box art here. Unless you get into the mega scales, and they got some really cool designs. Okay, and the back of this thing is cool too. Now, I think both sides here of the side boxes are pretty much, the side panels, are pretty much the same, okay? And that is what that looks like in the back. All right. Now, you can get, go either way with this. You can take the jacket off or and just leave it the way it is. I'm going to leave everything as it is, and I'll just set it up on my stand. All right. Now, the bottom of this here, if you can see it, alright, and that's what she looks like, okay, so let me turn that around, so you can actually see the word, the crow. I'm sorry about the glare, okay, and it's because this box is extremely shiny, okay, mm-hmm, and my dog is being mischievous, my puppy. Alright, so, enough about that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this down, and then I'm eventually going to pull it out of his box, okay? Be right back. Okay, we're back. Now, before we get into the actual figure in itself, this is the inside panel of the box. You can use it as a, a display for your, uh, your figure if you want to, but I don't do that. I kind of just put them on my shelves next to my other Living Dead dolls. But anyway, as you can clearly see, this is the actual window representation of when Brandon Crow, when he, Brandon Crow, Brandon Lee, when he first came out, uh, he kind of jumped into the window and cut his hands and all of a sudden he instantly healed. And that's because of the connection between the crow and him from, from a different um, dimension. I don't know where it is, some spiritual thing. But anyway, he has a tendency to heal even when they shoot him and stuff. He heals instantly, which I thought was pretty cool. Kind of gives him the invincibility until... Um, his death has been resolved, and then he can just go back to rest. But anyway, he's on a mission. This is the actual window that he jumps, swings through, and then swings back out. Okay? Anyway, that's enough about that. And you can use this for a display if you want to. It is your choice. Okay? Now, the actual doll in itself kind of looks a little weird, right? And there's a reason for this. The hair is not fully displayed yet. It's because... It's got a piece of plastic wrapped around the hair. Why they did this, I don't know. Maybe to keep it still until you actually pull it off. Which I will eventually remove it. But I don't want to do any kind of damage to it. But anyway, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Hang on. Yeah, it's going over the face and everything. Yeah, you got to carefully pull this off. There you go. All right, now... There he is. Okay, and the plastic's off his hair, but what we're going to do is we're going to kind of fluff him out a little bit. Alright. 
Let me let me play with my dolly. Alright, loosen up his hair a little bit. Alright. Okay, alright. There we go. And that's what he looks like right there. Okay. He's got that long hair, long curly hair. Okay. Which I think is cool. I've been waiting for this figure to come out. And when it comes to Mezco and stuff, by the way, these are Mezco figures. Along with the Mega Scales, the MDSs, they're also Mega. I mean, um, Mezco. Mezco's really coming to their own. They make some really, really cool looking figures. Highly detailed figures, but they are a bit pricier than NECA. Uh, but that's only because that's a completely different company and the way they make things. Uh, NECA is standard and their actual figures are 8 inch figures and stuff. Where Mezco gets into a bunch of other stuff. They're a bigger toy store. But anyway, the makeup job on this thing is pretty cool. Like I said about the face, my wife's like, I don't like it. He looks too much like a girl. <laughs> I'm sorry. And it's just makeup, and it's the face. I mean, most of the faces you see on this are pretty substandard in some aspects. Like uh, the Chucky doll and all those other ones. They're all going to be pretty much the same facial features. It's just, you know, everything else around it is different, okay? Now, getting into this, I notice... Hang on for a second here, guys. There's plastic on the hands, which we're going to pull off here. All right. And we got hang on. Okay. I'll be right back. I gotta fix this up a little bit. Okay, we're back. I had to do some readjusting on the actual uh, figure in itself. It has like a leather suit underneath this uh, jacket and stuff, and the actual hands in themselves, as you can clearly see here have some kind of like, um, I don't know, like a wire mesh or something around, right? like tape. I think he kind of taped his hands up in the movie, but that's what these are for. And they had little plastic uh, sleeves on it, so I had to pull them off. And when I did, it kind of pulled the actual leather um, sleeve over its hands, so I had to readjust it and put it back in its place the way it is. Same thing with this side, too. So keep that in mind. Okay, now this has got the trench, a trench coat on it. As you can see right here, okay. Like I said, I'm going to leave the trench coat on here, okay. And right now, it's not really bright in here, so I really can't see what's going on. But anyway, I did readjust the hair a little bit, too. Mm -hmm. So he looks a little bit more like the crow, like Brandon Lee, okay. But it's a living dead doll version of Brandon Lee's uh, character, okay. All right. Uh, this here has, according to the legs, it's not made of any kind of wire, but it's like a string. But it's supposed to technically represent wire, according to the way his um, outfit is. And I think it happens on this side too. Mm, not really, okay. But you can see right up here. Okay, he's got the wire in here, or whatever it is that they uh, actually dressed it up with. Mm-hmm. And you can see that. Now you can take the jacket off. And, you know, you don't need to actually leave the jacket on. The articulation on these figures are like any other figures. They move at the actual socket of the shoulder. Uh, the elbows do not bend, but it does move at the hands here. And it's a little tight. So keep that in mind. Okay. Same thing with the other side. Okay. All right. Yeah, so they're tight. The head. Okay. Is on a ball joint, so you can shift it like so, or just like that, which would be cool. You can kind of pose it any way you see fit. Give you a close up of the eyes. That's cool looking, in my opinion. It's cool looking. Okay, I'm gonna play with my dolly. <laughs> okay, the actual suit in itself. I'm not gonna take the jacket off, so I'm just gonna show you what it looks like inside a little bit. The feet are just like any other Living Dead doll. They're big, so you can stand them up. Okay, they got big feet. Okay. The back of the jacket has a cutout right here. 
like most trench coats. Okay, his trench coat technically is supposed to be leather in the movie. All right, all right, pull him down so he's adjusted well. Okay, well I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell when it comes to this figure. Okay. And that is my Brandon Lee, The Crow, from 1994. Now, I will say something about the new movie that came out in 2024 with uh, Bill Skarsgård. That's a good actor, man. The whole entire family are great actors. Alex Skarsgård, I think his name is, and his father. Uh, he was in Marvel. Uh, Alex is also in the MonsterVerse with Godzilla vs. Kong. Or was it Godzilla vs. Kong? Yeah, that one. But anyway, they're all great actors, and he was also Tarzan, Alex was. Uh, Bill Skarsgård was Pennywise in the It movies, and he's coming out with the third installment of the It movie, which is a prequel, so I, I guess that's his origin or something. We're going to see what they do with that. Uh, he was in that too as well. And he was also in this new movie. Now keep in mind, if you haven't seen the movie yet, when you do see it, it ain't, don't even try to compare it to the original because it's just too different compared to the original. But it does have its similarities, okay? They both, uh, him and his girlfriend died. You know, it's, there's a similarity there. And the way that he comes back is a bit different, okay? But the movie in itself, the 2024 version, is it's a good movie. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to criticize it that way. But I am going to say it's not as good as the original in my opinion. But Brandon Lee, he did a fantastic job. And there's technically nobody who can do a better job with the Crow character than the way he portrayed it. Okay. Now the second movie um, of the Crow, I think it's called City of Angels, had something Perez. He's a different actor, but I like that movie too. I thought that movie was absolutely really just as good as the first one. And then it got stupid after that. But anyway, then they come out with these new, the new reboot version of it, which, in fact, it is a reboot version, so they kind of changed it up a lot. So it is completely different when you see it, but it does have its similarities, okay? So keep that in mind. In the 1994 version, you have, I um, can't remember the actor's name, but he was in Ghostbusters. Um, but anyway, he played a cool part in that movie, too. The actors in the original movie, the way they handled it, to me, it was much more interesting, in my opinion. This new one is way too serious. Uh, but it does lack in some aspects. But all in all, it's not a bad movie. I'll be honest with you. Okay. But anyway, I'm going to end this here. This is my Living Dead doll based on The Crow. I have a bunch of other ones coming in. I just got to wait for them to come in. I've got the Halloween 2 Michael Myers version coming in. As well as... A few other ones that don't come to mind. I do have two other Mezco figures that are made based on the MDS version, Mega Scale versions. Uh, one is the Halloween 2 Michael Myers version, and the other one is the Glenn from uh, the Chucky series. Now, I do have Tiffany, and I do have three uh, different versions of Chucky, um, and I got, you know, Glenn, he's going to be coming in eventually, and that's going to complete that set. And I think I've got about eight of those Mezco figures, the, uh, the Mega Scales. I was only going to get one, and I started with the uh, the Bride of Chucky with his scars and all that stuff because he fell into the fan and got ripped apart. Uh, I was going to stop there, but I said, nope, I like these things too damn much, so I got all kinds, okay? But anyway, let me end this here. hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And Brandon Lee will see you real soon.